Welcome back for another caster series from the Trash Can League. This is going to be the round two fixture between Sheckler and Snooper. And today we'll be starting with Snooper spawning into the northwest of the map, Dakota, in the colour yellow. And he's playing as the Incan Civilization. His opponent is Sheckler, and he's going to be playing as the Lakota in the colour pink. So it's a bit of a Native American matchup for the first one on Dakota. Uh, Inca versus Lakota. We do see Mr. Sheckler himself going down to the south side of the map, picking up 75 wood, but nearby is 135 XP. Might be a bit too tough for this explorer to take down. He's already used his one-hit kill um, strike on his uh, on native guardians. He's going to go back for the um, simple wolf to try and pick off. In terms of other treasures, I'm not too sure. There's actually many outlaws on the map for him to convert. does have the bandit rifleman, bandit rifle rider at the top. There's the <laughs> there's the mass of the samurai treasure popping up again. Treasure appears on every single map for some reason at the moment. Bit of a weird one. Uh, Sheckler here looking for 30 coin. But uh, yeah, the thing is with early coin treasures as, as as the Lakota is you've got no way to spend it. So I don't... Sheckler going back there for 30 coin. I don't really know if it's going to help him or not. He's actually chopped for the early training post here. Which is a lot of investment. He did get that 75 wood, remember. But still, 125 wood in age 1 uh, seems to be quite a bit to chop. Um, which I, I guess is worth it. It's one of those... The cost is a sieve with lots of strong shipments in age 2. They do want that tempo. If I was to look at a random deck 1v1, got the 5 vil. Well, great. Four Axe Riders is a great card. Uh, great Hunter is a great eco card. So even wanting to do some, something like 4 Axe, 5 vil. Great Hunter, 700 coins to age up. That's four shipments. So you do need that tempo to try and uh, kind of push your efforts along in the second age. And versus Inca, I feel for the Incans here want to take mid-map with the two War Hearts. They want to try and uh, fight in the second age. I don't think Inca want to sit back and let the Lakota player get away with a, uh, a straight FF or maybe a semi-FF with uh, a couple Axe Riders going around to raid. So... And on a map with a horizontal trading route, Snooper, with their Tambos on the trading post, it could be tactical for him to try and take that middle map presence and try and contain Sheckler. Fourville is coming for the Lakota player. Feels like a bit of a late timing, really. I suppose they don't have much uh, much extra experience points from building anything in the first stage or you know, killing these treasure guardians off a little bit later and the XP. The training post came up a bit too late for it to really matter for the first shipment. Meanwhile, Snooper, he's already aging up here. Uh, he's got two catches down, aging up probably with the Chief. Yep, there's a, another catch going down, so i going to go for the third catcher before going for a market. I'd say what I've noticed as well, it looks like the Incan player here is now gathering for his... Um, a big button tech from the catcher for the extra four villagers. So it looks like Snooper is prioritizing the tech advantage of aging up with tempo and kind of sacrificing a little bit of economy. But we'll get that back by researching this villager shipment at a later point. And he's uh, at his um, age one llama here. Just to get that extra bit of food so he can get the big um, button tech called the Queen's Festival. Sheckler here, picking up a healer treasure. It's such a strong treasure, this is. Even having just a single unit with 360 HP, 10 range resist, is, is just so worth to have in your army just to pad it out and bulk and just tank so much damage. But the fact that you can heal your explorer to full HP, so when Sheckler's explorer gets to the second day, he's going to jump up straight up to 750 HP, and it's just going to be annoying. He's actually looking for that uh, war hut to travel to pick off. So I think this is um, a really nice play here from Sheckler. As soon as he sees that age up, he may actually turn his back and go straight into the base. Yeah, there's the age up. Two builder travois and a chasky. And um, defensive war huts here from Snooper. Maybe he's feeling a little bit timid, a little bit, a bit scared here from Daddy Sheckler. I know that Sheckler is an intimidating fellow himself. But um, securing the two prong horns, the trees and the two mines is very nice. You just you just have to feel that if you've got massive control in the middle, it just forces the Lakota player all around to the sides. But I suppose, in that sense, Lakota is likely to raid you, and you can't move your war huts in the middle of the map back home, where the cavalry can just pick a side, run that channel, go with it. Ooh, okay, so, um, looks like 
Snooper here, open up with double plume spearmen, sending in 600 wood first. Mass producing units behind us. I, I don't think we'll get a, a huge batch. He's only got six villagers on the food. Most of his villagers were on wood chopping. Now changing over to get to the huge uh, crates of wood here, but um, it looks like he's only get a batch of five. Five spearmen at the, at the very best. He only gets four here, so... Maybe he could just wait for the batch a little bit later just to get an extra three or four spearmen. So train, delay the train by 10 seconds. So that when you do push out and put pressure on your train post, you actually have a bit more siege for it and a bit more protection from, let's say, uh, uh, a four axe rider shipment. So it looks like, he, looks like Sheckler here, he opens up with the five vills, now sending in the four axe riders, but train bow rise behind. So I'm going to go for the, uh, he's going to go for his explorer. Plus four axe riders and a five bow rider, probably semi here, trying to be raiding around. And the bow riders is what he needs to deal with the plume spearmen. Um, cavalry archers versus spearmen is, is very nice to micro from the cavalry archers' point of view. Sometimes you feel the game's a bit unfair when you've only got spearmen chasing uh, and cavalry with, arch with um, the ability to fire. Luckily, not while moving. Um, I wonder if there's an upcoming game which allows you to fire cavalry. Um, your cavalry archers can fire while moving. I, I hope it's uh, not in the same franchise. I have seen some uh, promotional videos <laughs> suggesting that here, Gen 4, you can fire. Cavalry archers can fire while moving, which seems for absolutely ridiculous. But uh, yes, enough about those um, promotional videos. The heater and the chasky going at it, but the chasky is going to get destroyed here by the four axes, and the plume spin going to return. But more importantly, Danny Shuckler does defend his trading post. Gonna get another batch of bow riders being trained behind here. Another shipment ready to go. I think at this moment in time, well, he's gonna go for the 700 coin actually. So he's just basically gonna commit some train bow riders age two and just gonna use that to continuously spam units. He's not gonna try and age up after this because you know, he just hasn't got the food eco to contemplate aging up. So if he wanted to try something like that, he could have maybe gone the great hunter and then in 700 coin. But this just looks like a this looks, this looks like a colonial spam fest here from Sheckler. Another batch of burrows in queue behind us. He does have now in total 10 burrows. Nice that he's using his axe rise to kind of tank, if you can kind of say that. Like, he's still got his 10 burrows. And the fact is, just the strength of the Lakota army here is just dwarfing Inca. And Inca, they've kind of committed. They've gone mid map. The bowmen are away from the war huts to town center. And the axe rise are going to come in. The plume spins will have to turn and fight. Come on, Shackler, move this burrows. This is potentially a critical moment in the game. Another batch of bows will be trained behind this. And um, it's, it's, forcing, it's forcing the plume spearman and the spearman big button here from the war hut. So actually, Shaq will be very happy. I'm not too sure he can really tell if that's the big button coming out or just the train units or a shipment. But um, he certainly forced a big response. Yeah, now the bowman's getting a big trade. But uh, Shaq has done damage, it feels. He'll be happy what he's done. And he can sit back. Incan player, 22 villagers, but he does have a decent amount of catcher house behind this. 12 catcher houses with the Chincha Bruin. So 0.9 food per second. Basically a hunting dog's villager. So his eco is, yeah, basically about 34, 32. It's, it's a decently sized eco. Uh, meanwhile, Shackler with his 4 villager and 5 villager shipment now sending in Great Hunter. There's going to be 28, uh, food vill 28 villagers, but actually 28 strong villagers, it feels like. So we've got all the villagers on food. We've got the Great Hunter just coming in behind this. But now with, with the um, 700 coin already being sent beforehand, it's just committing to age 2. There's no real prospect of him aging up. He does not have the 600 coin in his deck. He has both seasons and clubs. I'm not a big fan of having both of the cards in my deck. If I was um, being honest in that situation. So that now... Shackler, if he has shipment right now, is he about to send? He's thinking, oh, I could train another batch of bow riders, send 600 coin and age. But uh, Shackler's thinking, probably needs to cancel this if I want to age up at a decent time. <laughs> Meanwhile, Snooper, starting to get that mass of jungle bows growing. Does have 15 plume spearmen, 12 bowmen's behind. Not going for the chimus here. Uh, you wouldn't want to go chimus into bow riders from the cross player. So, yeah, in terms of units, what the Snooper can make is making the right decision. Keeping Sheckler only down to two train posts, but uh, Sheckler is quite happy not really sending the. Well, I say he's not sending the 700 wood crates, but he's um, he's sending the 700 wood. He's got one barrel in queue. He might just cancel that 
and age up, but then use the 700 woods to drop down a war hut, research elite bows, and maybe get the Kree trading post. That'd be quite nice. Kree's on this map. Fire CDB you can train, but also you can get the leather tannin for 5% HP on all the units. Cavalry, infantry, just for 100 food, 100 coin. It's so worth it. It is so, so worth it. Just imagine dog soldiers with that extra 5% HP for basically free. You're not going to say no. And, you know, it synergizes well with uh, bow riders that also been a high HP unit. Shackler aging up now. He is aging up with the wise woman. So going for the slow age up behind here. I suppose he has just sent his 700 wood. Doesn't have a shipment ready to go. Going to try and raid behind and be just annoying. Try and keep Snooper's infantry back. I feel that with the fast age here, you could just try and get that bit of tempo with the Warheart where Kim's being trained. You've got elite tech. And if you do take a fight now, it's going to be so strong in comparison. Uh, the other thing that Wood provides is allows Sheckler to go for that community plaza. Now, I just I just, just had the idea before. I wonder if Sheckler will fight um, with or without a war dance. Looks like he's going to fight with a war dance. Uh, all his ducklings are looking very cute. I'm surprised they've all just stood there like... <laughs> If, if I saw a bunch of uh, Borais running around the pond and I was a duck, I'd probably uh, get out of the way. This is nice. He's just taking a treasure down with a superior force because, well, because he can. He gets to convert a master samurai. He did take a bit of damage. Doesn't really matter. Mainly just because he wants the experience points. And if anything, he just probably just, just should let that master samurai die. He doesn't really need it. His army is just going to slow him down. And he's just harvesting XP here from the Treasure Guardians. He's just making good use of his um, army. Little does he know that uh, the Incan Explorer here nearby for 100 XP as well. So that would be a big bounty for him to take if he can see it. He has one shipment ready to go. And naturally, I think he's just going to back off and get the cavalry combat. And just wait for his mass just to naturally grow. Does have Elite Bow Rise now in queue. I hope it's Elite Bow Rise now in queue, not the Axe Rise. Yeah, it is uh, Bow Rise. 28 bows with cavalry combat being sent behind. Joaquin is being trained. Defensive war hut here. I think the war hut could have been placed to secure another hunt on the side. I know he has aged up with the uh, wise woman for the bisons. Just a little bit of vision and map control sometimes can go quite well. But it uh, looks like Inca's just going in and Sheckler needs to back out. His elite tech's not in just yet. He's losing a couple um, H2 axe riders. Cavalry combat not in yet as well. He's not that on the community plaza. So a lot of things Sheckler needs to work on at the moment. Villagers tanking, not ideal, but some in this situation, if the Burrows are not firing onto the elite, if the jungle bowmen are not firing onto the Burrows, it's a bit of a win in that situation. A couple of uh, Wakins are out doing quite well. Chima runs on the backside. If um, Shekla can move his entire forces back and pick off these units for basically free, then he's got the green light just to go into dog soldiers for here for his next shipment. He does have dogs available. He's going nine Wakina to kind of continue this. Um, skirm goon composition and yeah a couple bow rides back here this is just easy kills here and snooper cleans essentially cleaned up he does maintain his jungle bowman mass but uh i fear for snooper here because a big button here from the lakota town center for the dog soldiers in two minutes time that could be five dogs and then you get the three from the shipment as well that'd be very very tough i don't think we see Shackler wanting to transition into axe ride production at the moment. He can't really afford... Well, he can afford elite axes. He needs to chop um, another 50 woods to get that to happen. And yeah, these guys are out to throw down another trouble marketplace out onto the field. 26 bow rides here. 29 Wakina rifles. Army is certainly in Shackler's favour. Snooper feeling the pressure now. It's designed to wall up. But remember that, that those two initial hunts eaten up. The only hunt he has access to is now is on the uh, top side, which uh, Sheckler's not actually pushing on the top side. He's going for the south. Um, Snooper's not interested in this hunt for the time being. And Sheckler's just going to waltz his way through. Thank you very much. But um, this is ex if Snooper wants to take, take a fight, this is best, probably the best place to take the fight. In and around his buildings, backed up by the Warhutton Town Centre. And um, there's one lonely bison just strolling through the Incan home city being absolutely fine. Wakinas are doing really well. You've got 33 of them. That's a lot of Wakinas to have. And actually, 
if uh, Shaka wanted to really surprise me and really impress me, he could send 1,000 wood as his next shipment, throw down a plantation, and research gun trade for a 25% attack on his Wakinas, literally taking his Wakina attack from about 20 uh, to 24 uh, due to the fact that they're based on colonial stats. A very strong upgrade there for the Wakina rifles, and you know you get the extra XP there from the plantation, and uh, it's um, maybe save you walking around uh, from mine to mine. But you can see how these villages on this mine will then go to this mine. Villages down here will progress uh, this way onto the mine. So he's kind of not crossing the map; he's just spreading out in different directions and having you know decent villager eco. I'm, I'm not gonna say micro, just awareness that he's not wasting villager seconds by let's say having these villagers over here and oh i'm gonna go and take this hunt in the other side of the map and bring them across it's not really a map where you can kind of have that luxury to pull your economy one side to the other very easily thanks to these cliffs in the middle Boraz gonna go top side gonna get a nice juicy rate here these villagers no great coats and uh, we should probably see about four villas go down i think uh there's two there's the third the fourth has just gone down now. Actually, a couple of these villagers stand there and fighting, maybe tanking for the bows behind. So, uh, Sheckler with a four. Ville Red will get out there b before losing too many units. Sheckler knows there's just too many jungle bowmen. He's going to need some sort of hand cavalry behind us to stabilize. Sending in five axe riders. Going for stagecoach. Elite axe riders behind. He's taking mid map as well. And um, Sheckler is. Sheckler's controlling the situation. Even though he's in the score deficit. Snooper can come back with a, a really decent eco. 13 counter houses, 34 vills, but it just feels and this is a this is um yeah, Sheck and now with the, the four TP stagecoach, I'm sure we go for the fourth training post here behind. Just wants to try and get Snooper out of the open and basically just wait for him to starve out his own resources. If he can maybe camp his uh Wikinas over here and just make sure that's not been taken. Snooper moving out, slow push with the balls and pikeman. He's got a lot of stuff there. They all look somewhat similar. 35 plumes and th more than 50 jungle bows. That's a lot of H2 infantry. But you know, these guys, low HP, only 90 HP. They do pack a punch. It has to be said. But when, you, when you're when you H3 and Sheckler, all those plumes spinners take down the building quite nice. But uh, the bowmen on their own won't be enough to take down this entire Lakota army. Only five elite axes for the time being. But plenty more that will come from as well. Not to mention the time ticks on. The Dog Soldier Big Button will become more and more scary. Still having the three Dog Soldiers in his deck to call upon. Maybe the Strong Eco. He might go for Santi support instead. I think that would be a... Uh, I'd, yeah, I'd rather see Santi support here instead of a uh, two kettle. Uh, I think the extra HP on your Axe Riders is going to be so strong. Because it's you don't need more damage. You just need the HP to outlast the poison. A beautiful Chimi Road here from Snooper. Just eight, but just enough to be super annoying and probably pull back. Just probably pull back the entire uh, Bow Rider mass just because it's easier to do so than try and split up. But these villagers on the coin mine, they need to go quickly. You've just lost a village on the hunt. It's absolutely fine, but uh, protect the others and actually send in reinforced elite axes. So this is just well played there from uh, Shackler. Couple light infantry here trading off with each other across the the Kree CDB. This guy's just getting into their TP. He's like, please don't hit me. I just want to get out of here as fast as possible. But, um, Light Infantry War, Lakarcha's not going to win this. They, they don't want to trade off skirms in a skirmby, you know, Archer War. In most matchups, in most civs, Archers are better than skirms in actual combat. It's more the fact that the skirms have the longer range, better fire animations to kind of move in, take a shot, move back. It's the for the Lakota point of view, they're very nice support units, but it's, it's the cavalry form the main crunch of your attack. Now a 19 elite axe riders with the fertility dance here to try and boost production. Oh, no, it's just it's just experience points. But I think Shaq is just getting himself ready for when he does want to go for that big, big push. Cavalry HP coming in. Still has a lot of coin, not a lot of food. Moving villages around onto one hunts to another. All his villas have finished their bison hunting. And um, he's having, he's even got his uh, training posts on food income, which is not what you usually have as, as well as any sieve really. But I'm sure he just once he's got himself relocated, repositioned, uh, he'll, he'll take them off, put them back onto, let's say, uh, Queen. I don't think he needs any more woods in this game. Can't see Shackler dropping down a, train, a town center. He has map control. 
he wants to uh, produce all send all of his resources into units and just keep the map keep the pressure and in the meantime snooper still age two aging up now behind aging up with the messenger going for the quick age up looking to get elite bowman elite cream spearman maybe go for the arm attack at the war huts as well Starting to help the longevity of all the units, maybe the uh, Plume Spearman in the hand combat versus Axe Riders. And yes, finally, Sheckler using his mobility, trying to move on top of the side of the map. Snooper doing his best to wall up, but this CDB or Villager, I, I couldn't see in the tree line, is um, disobeying orders, not following the shift click, and has uh, forgot to build the wall. But uh, Sheckler's going to go and actually tear it down in the first place. Siege dance has been called here from Sheckler's community plaza. A couple of people waving their arms about. It's a miracle how that all the units on the battlefield can hear that and s suddenly get stronger. That's what they do. But uh, it is what it is. There we go. There's the elite plumes and the elite spears. Now going for elite chimus as well. Just going for a, a triple H2 infantry composition here from the Inkling player. Looking at his deck, he does have himself melee infantry combat, so Plume Spearman and Chimu Runner, as well, as well as the War Chief and Maceman, I get combat. And has ranged infantry attack, so extra attack there for the Jungle Bowman. He's already sent his poison a card, so his projectiles do 25% more attack, so these uh, archers units are very, very strong behind this. Hopefully Shekla can pull uh, back and has a watchful eye on his because here comes some spearmen. They're moving in quite fast. 5.5 speed now with the speed card onto it and a bit of a connection there. But that's a really good reaction time there from Shekla. He's only, he will lose a couple, but a couple is much better than losing the entire army. Snooper trying his best to secure this at Hunt. Moving out. The jungle bowmen are here to intercept and this is the problem of having all your cavalry one way. He's got no real units to deal with the jungle bowmen. And this has got a risk of a <laughs> cleanup here, actually, from Snooper. He's got these units counter the bow rides so, so hard. The axe rides are trying their best to come in, but they're a bit out at the moment. He's got to call them in. Hopefully, he doesn't Zed move them where it costs, because they, they will just find the, the spearmen. Back to the main fight, and more bow rides going down here. And what a fantastic trade that was for Snooper. Sheckler getting out there. Chimera is intercepting the Wakina's plume spearmen on it, cutting their escape. And I think a big fight is forced here. Sheckler can't do anything but fight. But here comes the sudden charge of large reinforcements of dog soldiers. We do have seven on the field from the big button. No three dog soldiers shipped just yet. Wakina's standing still, taking on the Chimera. The plume spearmen engaging straight away into the Axe Rider and Lakota dog soldier uh, line here. But there's just enough units here for Sheckler to fight. He does have the war. Uh, dance on he's, he's only got eight vills eight vills is obviously much better than uh three or four most of those are away from the base it's the best he could hope for but uh in the end the dog soldiers coming through to clean up six of them still remaining one on critically low hp one going down for the cause but uh just the upgrades being stacked it does have the triple upgrades now cav combat cav attack cav hp it's, it's gone it's gone really well there for shackler pushing in with the siege dance but more importantly, he's zoned off the hunt on the left-hand side. The hunt on the right is still possible here for Snooper. Warhut being used to take onto that. But I think Sheckler's is just happy taking buildings down with Siege Dance, especially with elite axes and dogs. They're very strong sieges with the um, Siege Dance on. couple more burrows going down here from the Jungle Bowman. It's not over until, you know, Snooper does call the GG here and... Snooper's going to go for a uh, Chimu shipment coming out. Oh, still firing behind. Enough Wakinas here. I think the 31 Wakinas here are going to add a lot of supporting fire. Might actually want to keep the Burrows back in supporting away from the front line and let the Wakinas tank. But uh, the Chimu's gone down. The open belly of the Jungle Bowman is kind of exposed. Plume's moving forward to block, but just enough Wakinas here firing from behind. And the fact that Sheckler still has three dog soldiers on the field. Now sending three dogs behind. Lance style cavalry will clean up the bowmen, and I think Snooper is going to have to throw the towel here. He's lost his entire army. He hasn't got too much eco coming in. And Sheckler, oh, he's just floating resources because he's a mad lad. Look at him. He's, he knows he's win. He's won. He's like, yeah, I don't train any more units. The GG has been called. And game one, going for Sheckler. Real fun game, actually. I was expecting a bit of a colonial uh, agenda there. Maybe lasting 12 minutes, 15 minutes. Fight for mid-map. But um, Shekla going for a semi-FF here.
Well, okay, not really a semi-FF. I completely lie. I thought he would go for a semi-FF, but I actually wanted to... Um, Let's get some, let's get the uh, natives' noises away. He actually massed in the second age quite a, substan a substantial army. Five bills into the four ox riders, but the seven hundred coin came in thereafter, allowing him to get a s large increase of the production of uh, bow riders. And what Shaq did really well in this game was just to pick off units from the income player as they came out. Snooper. You could say, why was he pushing out? Maybe he was expecting the semi-FF and thinking, I could get away with about 30 units. Well, that's the wrong line. About 15 units worth of uh, production out in the field to put pressure on the training post. But Shekhar came in with 10 bow riders, 4 axe riders, and you know, got a lot of kills there. And at that moment, I was thinking, well, Shekhar's just done enough to get the age up in. But no, he just kept producing, kept producing, forcing the response there from Snooper. And we did get the age up in eventually after sending in Great Hunter and each of the wise women. So, you know, double food text there. Took a great fight there early More on. More reinforcements have arrived. Oh, thank you very much, News. Raiden with 97. Luckily for you, I've just finished the first game of the TCL between Sheckler and Snooper. But I've got a lot of games today to go through. So it should be a really, really good stream. So thank you very much for dropping by. And uh, Danny Sheckler doing one over Snooper. Big Snooper is the OP. Some people say he is uh, today. This game, possibly not, but he's a play all three series for every series in the round and every round. There's plenty of ways to come back. Uh, this final fight as well. Good positioning there from Snooper as well. It has to be said the positioning was very good, but uh, just just too much units there from Sheckler. Too much, too many upgrades and the ward downs as well. So we'll move on to the next game. Yeah, let's go straight into it, shall we? Yeah, Shekler versus Snooper. Game number two, let's do it. Right, guys, on the second game now. Now, it is the home map of Shekler. Shekler is the home player in round two, and he's decided he wants to pick his home map to be uh, Grand Chaco. Now, Shekler also won game one, so that means he gets to pick his civilization first, and he's decided to play as the Dutch civilization, and he'd be spawning into the northwestern map in the color yellow. No, he's not, because this is the British player. What am I doing? Shekler always plays in pink, it's his favorite color. Well, he's still playing Dutch, but he's spawning into the <laughs> southeastern map in the color pink, playing as Dutch. Snooper has counterpicked here with the British civilization, and he's spawned into the north of the map in the color yellow. This matchup, I, I, just, I just don't know this matchup. I, some day, some weeks I think it's Brit favoured, some weeks I think it's Dutch favoured, and now I'm back on the Brit favoured train. I think the British, their number one strategy versus Dutch is essentially age to aggression, bow pike, forward tower, send the coin, get your upgrades for hunting dogs and steel traps from the coin. Decent mana pop population, about 80, 90, no more. But um, start really uh, putting the pressure on the Dutch player with longbows. Longbows, they survive uh, two town centre shots. Well, no, they, they take two town centre shots to go down. They survive a colonial militia town centre shots. They trade very well versus the colonial skirmishers. A couple pikes push away hussars. Hussar production for the Dutch player is very expensive, especially when they want to try and use that food to build banks as well. And um, you can trade really well just having the extra range that the longbows provide you and just really cause problems for the Dutch player whether you want to kind of push out and engage just longbows or have to try and pull back and oh no one village is still hunting out and 15 longbow bolts come down onto him and yep that's a vill gone so it's a, it's a tough it's a tough matchup I, I think when it goes to the third age Dutch come back in very strong the lack of longbow upgrades really hurt Brit in this matchup as it goes on but um, we'll see how this game develops this map, most players will know, does spawn with no trading posts, only two native trading posts, the 2p and, oh yes, the double 2p spawn. Two ponds, though, and each pond providing two packs of two llamas. So Snooper here only with the two llamas, but Mr. Envoy here with his fabulous pink coat and pink hats. And, oh, I missed that one a little bit. He's escorting four llamas home. <laughs> They, um, the llamas certainly look like they've gone to maybe like a, a hen party or something with their pink collars. They look very fancy, let's say. Um, 
somewhat cute as well. Bit bit of a bit of a weird color scheme, just just like oh, I, f I found a llama here. Here's a here's a purple collar for you, or pink collar, and they're trotting their way back to the Netherlands. So yeah, six two in advantage of Shackler. Uh, Shackler aging up here. He's aged up with fifteen vil. I haven't seen Sheckler adopt the um, religion of the 14 will age up just yet, but it's okay. Having six llamas and a decent transition is uh, certainly will make, make me feel a lot better. Scout to the 70 woods, so he's going to try and push forward for that treasure, which is very, very nice, but he has got a very wood heavy economy in transition, so if he does crack shot this Jaguar and try and take his treasure, he won't get the full value of this, which is, you know, regrettable, but it's certainly. You'd still rather have 70 wood over having, well, no wood. So it's certainly good to pick this treasure up. You can look at the resources income per minute. Uh, even having that, like a 8 to 7 split food to wood. It's like a 2 to 1 um, income advantage there for the food. So the wood there, 15 of that being used for the bank. More importantly, Shackler does see a Ford Manor House. Is this early map control? Is this vision coming in for Snooper? Or is Snooper looking to go H2 here? Uh, 1v1 deck. He does have advanced arsenal instead of cavalry attack in H2. Virginia Company makes an appearance for not being sent. I mean, it's just his standard 1v1 deck, but uh, double villages now from that manor house. Still moving forward. Enough woods to, to drop down. Hey, perhaps it's quite interesting. Ages up with food, though. So, okay, goes to the barracks, but ages up with food. So I guess he's just going to try and send some of woods and just use that food to uh, get batches of longbows out early because you can see in his base he's still got oh big bongo dropping us stuff thank you very much you do see that the British player here has enough uh, food villages on the food and has over gathered you could say um, so when he does get the huge crates he's trained a couple of villages but he's still got so much left over could have cut food production early to get onto the, the wood line more wood more houses make greater effect of the food crates here but uh, early longbows and um snoopers read my mind of what i think the brick player should do in this matchup every game sheckler here going for the 700 standard opening bank in transition bank on the 400 then production on the 700 wood behind this he does see the forward manor house i think he can assume that there's a barracks coming down he does see the four barracks so he will open up with um, skirmishes himself but uh, it, this, this is like the weird point where it feels like you kind of need to double produce skirmishes to try and keep up with single racks production of longbows there's the first batch of longbows in Vigil are trying to herd this forward hunt of rares will get pushed back luckily only five longbows will not two hit kill a villager but even then Shackler's got all his wood he's going to go for his third bank on the 700 wood which is you know standard build order but now he needs to get the market down. He needs to get the house down. And if the longbows just stand around and deny a market or a house, uh, it gets very tough very quickly for Dutch. And behind this snooper is just probably trained more longbows. Yep, so there's the five out. Another five coming in behind this. Decent eco behind this, you could say. He does have seven mana houses in total for 80 populations. So an extra seven villagers. So the economy itself for Sheckle is stronger than... Uh, snoopers but it's just these units just get to stroll in into dutch dutch's home base and there's not really much shackler can do about it he hasn't actually queued up a skirmisher yet he's just going to try for a stable thinking well, i'm going to try my hand at hussars but the problem is with hussars there's the pikes you just need about five to ten pikes all you need and the rest longbows and there's just not really much you can do there's no way Sheckler gets more than five Hussars out in total before a fight engaged. One villager going down. Longbow's just moving forward. Sheckler needs to re to react to this. He does put his villagers into the town centre, but there's Pikes here to cover. He's trying to siege the house. Uh, forget the house. If there's a market down, you just buy the wood to get another house. It's not really worth losing Pikewind for it, but still, villagers in the town centre. Idle time. It's a win there for Snooper. His little win's going very, very well. Even this Explorer fight, the greatest thing ever. So, who brings a gun to a knife fight? Like, come on. That was that was going to be a fair fight between Shekla and Snooper, but uh, Shekla brings up the fire skirms. Still nine pikes, though, pushing in onto the manor house. And the thing is, from Shekla's point of view, he's got five skirms. He's going to lose versus the nine longbows. He's got two huss. He can't gather food because he's got visions into the town centre. And this... 
it feels like the more Sheckler puts into this defense, the more he plays into the British player's hands. He's going to try and push out the Huss on the snare. Snooper is training a long bow. There's such a coin. A stable is down, and as soon as five Hussars hit the field, that will force a pikeman shipment from Sheckler. That will force more units, and that will play into the British player's hand. Snooper now taking the score lead here from Sheckler. Llama's still available for both players. Two for Snooper. Sheckler still has all six. I'm, I'm one of those players who likes to eat their uh, llamas in early, and the thing is, I want to see... I want to see these being used to help you get your units out now, because the fact is, you could have ate all these llamas, maybe not sent um, food, send in pikes at the moment, pushing with an extra batch of five hussars from the llamas, and then the pikes pop out as well with the skirmishers and minutemen and crush the fight. Sending 700 wood behind food behind this and still having llamas feels a little bit questionable. I think uh, Shaq was trying to age. He's got the five banks here, which is for a prolonged age two. It actually works really well. So what Shaq has done really well here, I give him credit for. He's he's um he's acknowledged that he's not going to go to the fortress age. He's going to try and trade off in age two, but he's just still hasn't got, he hasn't got enough skirmishers compared to longbows. And now that there's a three unit composition here from Snooper, here come the hussars. The pikes can cover the hussars here for Shaq. They can't engage. They cannot push out and engage because the pikemen will push them away. And there's all these skirmishers going down ready for the three. The Hussars are still there. He's got more Hussars than what Dutch can. A big batch of five will come out from Sheckler, but there's still pikemen. Shipment ready to be caught. Probably will go for the CM here, but even then, only the pikemen will go down to one hit kill. Uh, Minutemen will be called behind this. We could go on the top side and try and melee the longbows. Get out and get a bit of block, but uh, Snooper will quickly uh, pull back. I think he's going to be quite happy with that trade. Certainly, recessing that skirmish account is a very big win in his book. And Snooper, another batch of five longbows, more hussars. He got five hussars just chilling at home. He's probably got the um, the uh, bug where if you kill a unit and you, and you Z move, the other units just don't see their targets. 17 longbows stand still. Minutemen. HP quickly decreasing behind here. Shackler's cavalry looking rather depleted. Only the 10 Hussars now. And Snooper with still 6 pikes and 5 Hussars, not to mention the entire backbone of that longbow mass just sitting still, firing. And just having some great damage output here. Shackler, he, he's trapped, he, he's been engaged, he's been snared. He's going to try and fight, but the pikemen here doing so much good damage here. What a positive trade that is for the British player. And uh, Shackler again. Well, he used 700 food to get that army, and what remains of it? Not a lot. Brit, certainly an S plus tier sieve, if you're not counting the African sieves. Um, just going to march their way back in, and Sheckler is now on the back foot. Oh, no. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, coffee trade is not what you want at this moment. I don't think you can really sacrifice your unit speed. Especially because I just don't see him really getting bank six and seven down. I don't think he can get a seventh bank. He might get a sixth bank, but even then, one extra bank doesn't really mean too much. The problem is your hussars are much slower, so they're going to get caught and snared. Your skirms, if you want to take a uh, try and engage the longbows, they're so slow they would take an extra ranged volley attack there from the British longbows with that extra long range. So. When Sheckler's committing to fight skirmishers versus longbows, he's probably going to take twice the losses as a result. It's just, it's just one of those things. Pikeman shipment here from Sheckler does catch Hussars actually in a really great position. And Hussars have gone a bit deep behind here. The Sheckler's still have a substantial mass behind this. And what a great pop there from uh, Sheckler with the Pikeman has caught Snooper a bit napping there. And I think. Has caught me a bit by surprise as well, thinking that uh, Shackler was just going a bit too greedy there with the bank card, not getting too much instant um, benefit from it. Does push out, but a couple of musketeers now in melee will just force the Pike Hus army back. Longbow's still firing quite nicely, but um, only one Rax here from Snoopers. Not really getting enough Pike Longbow units out behind here. He's now transitioning into Musketeer Hussars, which makes sense. You know, you get you're starting to roll through your. Unit shipments. I'd still think uh, six longbows is what you need in your next card to deal with the growing skirmisher mass. But um, yeah, he's just going to keep on training the units now. 
So, Snooper, 52 villagers, nearly full mana pop, actually coming down. He's got 18 in total, and he's got another room for two more. It's just so many uh, villagers that Snooper has, it's, it's it's really good to see. Sheckler, though, he's going for the... <laughs> How many banks does Sheckler have? Okay, that's that's his seventh bank. He's, he's actually built seventh now from the church. He's going to go for his eighth from the shipments he has his knife in the deck just in case he wants to go for and the thing is when you have this many banks it's just so good to buy at the market you can literally buy another batch of three to get the 350 he has enough food then to go for the ninth bank and all his villagers will be on the hunting gathering and these villagers they do oh they do not have their steel traps i, th I think steel traps is a huge priority at the moment Especially because you've got so much of the coin income. You need to bounce that food at eco out. And Hello. gathering in base berries is quite nice, I suppose. Has he seen this hunt over here? He's seen the hunt. He can go for it. And when you have this many villagers on the food, you can actually afford to get these big batches of hussars out now and kind of contest what um, the Brit player would have had an advantage of you previously. Let's have a look at here. In terms of um, Snooper's mass, 20 musketeers now. Only 15 longbows, 11 hussars. Snooper ain't aging up. He's he's very happy in mass in this. Still, only... Okay, he's got his second production facility. So it's great to see there from Snooper. I really appreciate that play. Uh, I understand it. I think that's a great decision from him. Pushing on to the food eco. Just needs to kind of ungroup his longbows from the musks. I, I feel that they're under the same control group. So every time the musks move, the longbows put down their bows and not attack. But actually, you want them on separate control groups. When you pull the musks back, the longbows still stand there. The Sars actually going to go onto the longbows. Going to get a decent engage there, but there's enough um, yellow units here from Snooper to actually pick off those Hussars. The musks in hand combat will do pretty well. Just not many skirmishes behind uh, to pick off the musks fast enough. And it's the reinforcements I'm concerned about here for Shackler. Snooper, another batch of... It's going to be a batch of four Hussars if he pays attention. Uh, just, just the three there coming in here. But the Hussars... Her from Snooper with their cavalry HP on top of the skirmishers. Need to remember the Dutch, they do not have any cavalry upgrades in the second age, only infantry ones. Now sending the CM because he's gone through all the other cards he wants to send. One Hassan cube, he just hasn't got the food. He's, he's floating all the coin in the world, but he hasn't got the food. He's on the berries. These are nearly expired, and he's going to have a bit of a problem with it. He's going to have too many villagers trying to crowd around one berry bush, but uh, that's neither here nor there. No anti cav, more Hussars on top of this. Singular Hussar trying to block and protect the skirmishers, but they're going to go down. The villagers, they do have their great coats. Unfortunately, though, I don't think great coats will, will allow you to survive against uh, 10 Hussars, 16 Musks, 9 Longbow, a lot going on. And uh, Sheckler hasn't evacuated to this Northern Hunt just yet. Actually, trying to mine from the tin mine as well, just to further increase that coin income. He's uh, currently at. Uh, He's probably bought quite a bit. I can't actually see the market price. I'd love to see what the market buy price is at the moment. I imagine the food cost be up to about 130, 132. Certainly bought quite a bit of food. There's a big Minutemen pop coming out. Just trying to trade it off. But uh, even holding the musks and longbow in place, it's the Hussars and the free reign. Shackler down to 17 vills, 13 in the town centre, chilling. Well, 14 now. And uh, yeah, a couple of vills and woods. Not really contributing too much. Batch of pikes. Good pop, but Musk's here to do, and Longbow as well. And yeah, th this is this is for me, I... Okay, the, the idea from Snooper was very, very uh, good. I, I think the execution, obviously at this level, was good as well. In terms of how you do match the play, I just feel if, if the Brit player goes age 2, I just think Dutch is so on the back foot, I, it's so hard to contest early age 2 pressure from the Longbows. They do so well in this matchup, and I think this is a good, good um, kind of lesson for any Brit players out here on this matchup. This is probably how you want to go about it. And uh, yes, as the, if the game goes on super, super long, you still have the map. You have Dutch on the back foot. You have uh, carded hussars. Could go for double hussar upgrades here for Snooper. So maybe take away Team Musket HP or uh, advance Arsenal and go for cavalry attack as well, just to boost those uh, hussars in the combat versus. Uh, Dutch Hussars, because because that, that's where that's where Dutch Hussars are mainly used, not to deal with the longbows, but to block the enemy Hussars from gaining to gain access to your own skirmishers. And you see, Sheckler must have lost quite a few batches of skirmishers to a few Hussars, which is a bit of a shame. It's like ah, just in, just just imagine you had the pikes, just imagine if you had the Hussars there, and just Snooper flooding in the units now. 
The banks are still working, but uh, the village eco from Shecklers <laughs> is 17 to 65 is the difference in terms of villagers. Obviously, Sheckler having all of these banks behind here. Eight banks in total is certainly a lot. But with no map. A, a barrack that's not Shackler, that's not gonna help you. <laughs> a single barracks when your entire town's going down, but I appreciate the fight into the last second. And uh Snooper there getting game number two of this play all three series. And uh yeah, who who, who wants that final point? Every game win is a point, it's up for grabs. Who's who's gonna go to that final game to take it? We'll find out. Yeah, let's look at the uh, post game now. So in terms of resources, Snooper out gathering by about 3.5k. Obviously most of that was food, but you, you can see how much food Snooper has. Nearly 17,000 uh, resources. So that's just continuous production of longbows, hussars. And if we look at the timeline, apart from that one fight where I thought that... Uh, Sheckler basically cleaned Snooper. It was a good engagement. Look, it was over here. It was a really good engagement. Just Snooper was able to back out. Snooper was never out of military and just could keep remassing. Sheckler spent all his 700 food here to get his hussars. Took a fight and got crushed. Then used his llamas to basically try and bounce back and get some sort of stable footing. Gets a lot of units out. Trades pretty well with Snooper, but uh, once the upgrades start rolling in, the trades become more and more favourable for Snooper. And this was, yeah, this was the fight near the um, the tree line. Just the Hussars from Snooper uh, on Shackler's skirms. Just dominated the cavalry war. Not enough there from Shackler. Shackler tried to get his Hussars onto the longbows, but then got picked off by the British Hussars there. And uh, a couple of pikes doing quite well as well. So a good effort there from Shackler. I'm curious to see actually how, um, if this game goes even later, how does actual banks affect this matchup because i feel that in age two it's brit favor but could there be a, like a, a super late age two game where you know the mana the mana bonus is done he's not going to get any more coming in i've got sun in my eye is actually it's actually sunny in england for once i can't believe it it's september it's sunny what's going on no idea and um yeah the, the resources was close it's just the unit you know, efficiency in trading was in the british players favor Uh, okay, this is uh, this is brutal as well. The the lack of production of villagers that really that really hurt. But uh, another reason why there's a lack of production here that Ford coin mine, longbows. You can't mine if if there's longbows in the field and you got a Ford coin mine. You can't mine it. If there's longbows out of range in the town centre and can pick off your villagers there and then. And you can see how Shackler was pressured to try and get as many units out to defend his base as possible. So he's cutting villager production just to try and stay in with the military and just catch up really with the snooper with the you know faster military production and yeah a close game a really good game game of the night so far obviously it's only been the second game but um yeah well played and we'll uh, move on to the next game Right, we're into the third game of this play all series. Round two of the Trash Can League. This is Snooper's home map. Snooper, the away player, his home map is going to be Malaysia. Which is quite interesting because that's going to be the, it's the starting map for round three. Maybe Snooper just wants a bit of practice, but uh, he also won the last game on Sheckman's home map. So he's chosen to play as the Indian Civilization. And allowing Sheckler to counterpick. Sheckler going to play as the Germans. This is a nice map for India. The, the, the double explorers. They, uh, double cavalry gets uh, cr across the map very quickly. Nice line of sight. We'll go and try and pick up as many of these water buffaloes as possible. If we take up the line of sight, we can see that Snooper, he's got four buffaloes already. But he's seen so much of the land. There's another buffalo down here. He's going to get another uh, two up here if he, if he carries on his um, scouting. Okay, it's just one. And the second one here is already picked up by Sheckler, it looks like. Sheckler being very wise to carry his 
a buffalo with him. The Indian Explorer is an H1, not strong enough to take down the German Explorer, unless the German Explorer is taking a lot of HP. And yeah, Shaq is just looking for buffaloes. He can't really risk taking treasures at the same time. <laughs> bit of a buffalo uh, contestion here, but a uh, bit of a, a, cat, a very peaceful drive by. Shaq is like, all right, I got three. Snoop's like, okay, I got two. Two buffalo want to go one side, one buffalo want to go the other side. Snoop is like, yep, good day to you, sir. Shekla says, likewise, I hope you have a fantastic morning. The weather is beautiful today, isn't it? Oh, yes, it is indeed. And they go about their business. Back in base, though, this is interesting. Shekla leaving the coin crate on the floor, going for uh, what looks to be a 16 villager age up here from the German player. So the idea is you cut a vill by skipping the market and the extra investments. So you have a little bit of a less eco, but try and age up with a bit of tempo. Maybe Sheckle is fearing a 10-10 from Snooper. Okay, maybe not 10-10, but just forward aggro. Early pressure from Sepoys. And he wants to be in his best position raised to defend. But uh, we'll see how uh, Snooper progresses this game. Let's have a look at Sheckler's decks. So he's going to go for the 16 Vils. He's got 16th queued up. I think he'll have enough foods to go for the um, age up on 16. He's got a buffalo here to eat just in case things don't work out. He's working on 80 coin uh, nearby as well. He's got a couple small treasures, 20 coin, 40 wood. Big treasure here, 55 experience points. That's, that's, that's a beautiful treasure there for the German player. Polar bears have an experience buffed by one XP. I don't know why. It just is buffed by one XP. It's just... <laughs> I think it's to do with the Chaos ability, but um, yeah, 26 XP is very, very nice to take. 35 wood will help Shackler in transition for the trading post, so that'd be quite nice in its own sense. And 20 XP, 20 coin, just from a CAC is a very strong treasure again. So the Ajib's come in, he's actually gone for the 17 Vil, and at this point, you just you just have to ask Shackler, were you just being lazy? Were you just being lazy because... I, just, I see now no advantage of not going market H1. I'm, I can pretty much go market every game with Germany, but uh, I just feel that if you're going to go um, no market, you go 16. If, you, if you're going to go 17, just open market. And the reason you go open market is look at your coin count, Shackler. You've got 250 coin pieces. That's a, that's a lovely amount of coin you have there. But that's better invested in the market and buying food, wood to get your train post down earlier, to maybe catch this next pass of... Uh, XP if it you know if it was a bit closer to the northern side. So I think Shackler, your homework I'm setting you today is to investigate the H1 market opening here from Germany. You know, now the market coming down only now. Yeah, at this point your place mines should be being researched. You'd already had gangs or possibly text. Hunting dogs is already done. And you know, once you get the age up in, you'd be sending all those oh, set wagons onto onto the coin as they would. Yeah, moving over now. He's actually, he's actually eyed up a tree. He's actually sending a few back onto food. Ooh, what is Shackler up to? I'm interested. What is he doing? What's he doing? Okay, now he's moving across. Having enough wood for hunting dogs and placer mines. Um, probably should place the mines first over hunting dogs because you want to have all five set of wagons on the tin mines. You have more coin income than the food. It doesn't overly matter, though. Three set of wagons. I want to see what he does with, with his wood. He's gone for the uh, one train post. This is going to be a double house stable standard opening. Yeah, well, there's the stable coming down. Oh, Shackler, Shackler, no. Why are you building a stable with four villagers instead of a settler wagon? Uh, settler wagons build. Settler wagons build uh, three times as fast as a settler, so it's certainly much more efficient to use a settler wagon to do so. Maybe Shackler's thinking, right, I need to get as much coin as possible. But if you've got a little bit too much food, well, you can always sell a click at the market. It's a good exchange and keeps you having that tempo. But I think uh, Shackler needs to be aware. He needs to buy another batch of uh, woods to get this full batch of lands out anyway. Meanwhile, let's have a look at Snooper's point of view. What he's, is he up to? So he's aged up. He's got a 1v1 water deck. Opened up with 700 wood. Now into going into export, which is... Yeah, it's 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 fair enough. Um, it's interesting because he's got he's got his wood on on the floor. He's taking his time to gather it up. I I think it's so impactful wood crates with what you're wanting to try and do is to gather them super super fast. 
Yeah, his next ship is basically already in. He hasn't even spent the first one yet. Are we going to see dock play from Snooper? A couple of sepoys do come out. Uh, Snooper could go and try and take train post uh, control away from the German player, but uh, with all this wood coming behind, constantly coming down, obviously, for, you know, to spend that 300 export, but with a uh, water deck behind this, and on the nature of the map, it's quite tempting for Snooper to throw down the dock at this moment in time to spend it. Doesn't need a Rax because he's got the Agri Fort. I don't think he's going to try and go for an early stable. He's going to be stable here. Yeah, I, I can see I can see why the 700 wood here works quite well uh, to, to get that early production. But uh, this is actually going to be a really good engagement here for Snooper. Sheckler thinks he can try and get, catch Snooper snoozing. But um, Snooper is certainly shown why you can't spell Snooper without OP in there. And that was a quick reaction. One Ulan going down straight away. And Sheckler retreating with his cavalry. Which means he's not raiding Snooper's base. Snooper absolutely fine gathering. Eight water buffaloes, lots of XP coming in here. These guys, 0.1 XP per second. So it's, it's basically an eighth of a trading post. Maybe a ninth if we're pushing it. So a Snooper's at a trading post. Okay, in comes East Indiaman, which... It's a dock. It knocks off 20 wood per fishing boat. Honestly, I think at this moment in time, if you're not sending this card one, I, it just feels like just foreign locking would be better. Foreign logging would be better, build a dock, and then maybe build like 12 fishing boats max. You don't have to fully commit to a full water boom, but this card here makes you basically commit to a full water boom behind this. That's sloppy from Snooper, uh, losing the double elephants there. Um, maybe Snooper's just tactically placed them in the base so when he comes in later with Mahouts, Yurumi, Siege Elephants, they can get to uh, get revived at full HP. But it's really nice to have them alive so that they can heal units. You know, this this Sepoy can be healed up. They can heal each other as well, which is very important. Uh, I understand that they were being snared by the cavalry, so they couldn't really get out. But uh, you know, there's, no, there's no Minutemen here. I think Sepoys shouldn't be scared of crossbows. Especially if the Orlans are being busy with the elephants, that's when the sepoys do well. And, and I suppose at that moment in time, the, the, the elephants on top of the crossbows, if they get a single stun, wow, that fight just transforms straight away into India's favour. The sepoys get to close in, the Orlans can't touch these units. And um, yeah, so Snooper's still making units, going for a bit of a contestion. Now mixing in the Gurkha with some Zambrax. Might actually want to cancel this Gurkha and try and get the second uh, Zam out, or just you know get his villagers going. But he has a, he does have a house being built at this moment in time, so that's actually quite nice. I don't need that anymore. And Zam's just waiting for the Ulans to come back into the base, but uh, Sheckler does see this, and I think for Sheckler, if he sees Mass Zambrax, well, he just knows not to train anymore, and he's probably aging at the moment as we speak. He is um, getting his great coats. I'm loving this emergency crossbow. Doesn't have to complete the batch, but it's there just in case Sea Boys decide to push in. Uh, the British Consulate now being researched here from Snooper. He was on the Osman Alliance, got himself all the villagers he needs. I think he skipped the Hussars, chose to not have them, and soon we'll have enough um, export there for the Constant Musketeers, which is very, very nice. The thing is, at the moment, this dock rickshaw so far, 200 wood. Uh, 20, 40, 240 saved, there's maybe 60 just on the third boat. Could have had four vills on the wood trickle. Uh, I, I think the wood trickle there makes a lot more sense. Anyway, the elephants get back up and this huge stomp on the crossbows. It's tactical, tactical um, claymore set in there from Snooper. Just letting the elephants die exactly where he predicts those crossbows will be later on. They come up for a huge stun. And although the sepoys are being cleaned, it's certainly good. Um, it's certainly nice just to kind of force extra crossbows being made, pick off Ulans oh, before they get upgraded. Um, Snooper though, snooze in on his 12 Zambrax. If the Zambrax were here present, all of the Ulans would have gone down. Yes, the crossbows would still stand still and you know would do very, very well, but no Ulans there for him to upgrade. And I think the Snooper's like, ah, ooh, I had all these units available. Ah, sh mm, probably should have used them, shouldn't I? Yeah. He's still training. He's still training Zamprax. We've seen the skirmisher mass. He's seen this. 
He's going for Camel Attack, which is a nice... He's off Desert Terror in his deck as well. I don't actually think Desert Terror is that good of a card. I'm just going to be real with you. I 0 0.5 and all actions damage. Yeah, it does kind of synergize well with the... With the you know, have an increased attack, then increase the multiplier works quite well. But I think I'd rather have the four extra sours, really. Four extra sours, you know, because you, you're you going to need units to do a light infantry at some point. You know Sheckler will call the eight skirmishers at some point, maybe the next card. I mean, opened up with three war wagons, but his next card is most likely going to be the eight skirmishers here. Um, I think Sheckler trains a batch of war wagons and the ship the war wagons just in case more sepoys being trained or sepoy sour. Not often you see the combination sepoy zambarak. So I think just the, just the war wagons here from Sheckler just is a cautious play, uh, not the optimal but certainly cautious. Just let's back out, gets to see what he's working with and what he has to do to, to defeat Snooper, and realizes he's got a weakness at the moment to skirmishers. So he's going to try and utilize that. Uh, Gurkha's in the second age, only 18 range, and are pretty just poor units versus other skirmishes, only good versus heavy infantry. And so um, Shackler's like, right, I'm going to report back to my base. Sir, we scouted out. Enemy going Zam, Gurkha. Shackler's like, roger. I'm going to make lots of skirmishes. Still train another war wagon, though. I, let's just not... Let's, let's not train too many here, Shackler. Let's see what your ship is going to be. Is it the eight skirmishes? He's going... I was going frigate. We have a sneaky dock boom southern side here from Snooper. He's currently up to how many fishing boats? Hello. Twelve. Eight on the northern pond. Adish. Oh, Sheckler's got to play into Snooper's hands. If he tries to go for water, I feel this is going to be tough. So, um, Sheckler just trying to get some line of sight on the on the water. Okay. You don't need line of sight at the moment and at the actual point. We just need someone to drop the flag, and he's trying trying to do that now. He's trying to find the flag. Where's the flag? Oh, it's down here. Let's click that. Let's go over here. Let's hit that button and let's plop it there. And that frigate will come in. It's nice that he'll idle a lot of his fish and eco, but um, yeah, it just needs a, a single defensive ship shipment here. Snooper, if he just sends two caravels behind and so can't recover this position, the southern side's all his himself. And this is just that moment where if that uh, early shipment was eight skirms, or if that second shipment was maybe like get eagers, that's when you can really push in and put the pressure on. But at the moment, the frigate's just going to idle here. Whatever Shecklin does, he shouldn't try and sit underneath the dock, I feel. I feel that... Because you know that the only thing that India can really do to hold on is send two caravels. And if you lose a lot of HP on your frigate, then you will lose that position and let's say a caravel with one hp a dock with 10 hp is gonna if it survives and all those fishing boats will survive nice actually engagement here from the frigate on the side snooper trying to take this fight at the moment he's gonna lose quite a lot here the Orlans are just sieging the wall though they are veteran Orlans, but the zam's actually gonna get great value here the fact that shackler's lost most of his veteran Orlans already and you know i'm looking at his ranged infantry i'm not really seeing it the crossbows have already gone it seems and let's step back at home, chilling underneath the elephants again. No, they've just been picked off. And, you know, the, the actual Gurkha mass here from Snooper is doing very, very well. And, uh, yeah, just, just the war wagon's not really firing, finding the units to counter. Just just trading. Just trading in its own right. But then, um, although having the frigate's very nice, he's only idling the fishing boats. He's going to lose the dock, the frigate. And actually... Shekla's going to lose his entire advance on the water for no fishing boats killed, really. Ten? Okay, he might have lost three, max. Now Shekla will be forced to try and drop a dock, maybe an outpost to secure this beachhead, repair the ships. But the kind of the timing, the tempo is starting to go. India is starting to scale. All the Ulans have been picked off. And it didn't even feel like it was a massive fight happened, but somehow Shackler's only walking away with nine skirm and just the, uh, the four war wagons here. He's got another two back at home. Now Shackler's like, all right, I'm scared of the Mahouts coming out here from Snooper when he does age up. Hasn't aged up just yet. Snooper looking to age up though on the 700 coin. I think I think that's the that's the big thing. It's the, it's the if the Indian player was an age three, then the war wagons make perfect sense. But because he's still an age two, the war wagons just feel a little bit out of place here. Skirmish is going to come to reinforce, which is very, very nice. And uh, he's going to start to move back in. Does he a couple of villagers forward? 
So he's like, yes, I get to see, get somewhere to raid at least. Um, a lot of villagers on this forward coin mine. No back spawn or gold mine here. This um, map generation. You know, so after the two in-base mines are gone, like, you're out on the out on the map. So we're going to get some nice picks here. Uh, these villagers going down. Brick consulate bonus, 10% HP. Or, yeah, 10% HP or 7% HP for 10 HP. But um, a couple of bills going down is no biggie when you have this going on. Single caravel moving up to clean up the frigate. No dock was built to repair the frigate. No tower was built to kind of pick off the caravel as well. And the, the thing is, Shekla... Shekla was kind of like trying to disrupt the eco, which is kind of fine because Indy has a lot of eco to kind of be disrupted. Or they, he can afford to have his eco disrupted, but that power spike of the semi-FF, that was that was the opportunity to smash through the gates and destroy those colonial Gurkhas. Uh, Skirm's looking for a way in, but Snooper remain, uh, remembering to wall up that far right of the map behind the Sufi Mosque. He's got a really nice uh, laid, layered wall, incorporating the buildings in the market, the agri forts. Um, even the berries, like, these berries can't, can't run through that. Uh, from Snooper's point of view, you could argue with nine water buffalo, this is a perfect amount to drop down a sacred pen. It is definitely worth doing so. It's not crucial, it's not a game changing if you do have it, but it's, if you do remember it, it's, it's, it's worth doing. It's worth doing, especially because these water buffalo are, they are the equivalent of cows, I think, yes. Yaks are the equivalent of llamas, but uh, water buffaloes are the equivalent of cows, so it's only worth to sacred pen them. Yeah, Jaeger's been really good in this matchup. Like, you can see how the Jaeger would match up versus uh, Zambarak, Gurkha. Yes, uh, Shekla may have double camel cards at some point, but as the game goes on, it's like, well, a couple of war wagons will just knock down any um, sours coming in. The Jaegers and Skirms will just melt the Gurkha Zam combination and Snooper will be using his stronger eco to spam more units to try and you know match the German powerhouse. But now you can see now that the Germans on the back foot is trying to run down town centers. He doesn't know about the southern side. Okay he does now. He definitely knows now and I think Oh Sheckley even now sends in two caravels doesn't even have 1k wooden in his deck. Does have a deck called Malaysia, but uh, having the frigate instead of 1k wood, I'd rather just abandon nine black riders or or even eight Olands. Have like the war wagon nine Oland combination, double skirms, but uh, not have 1k wood. Feels a bit tough. Oh, you honor that, Krishna. Harrison, please have some shame to promote this dead game. Sit with the developers to make them understand the, the critical issues. <laughs> well, I mean, this, what we've what I've seen from these players, uh, I've seen some really good games, and like, what I like is the whole, it's a German-Indian matchup, it's a, a legacy uh, Civ matchup from the old game, and it's, it's actually really balanced. I, this, this game in particular, this series in particular has been very, very good. This game has also been good. Interesting uh, dynamics. Shekla topside trying to finally take this down its dock. But, uh, yeah, Snooper not having it. Sending in the big boy. There we go. Snooper with the frigate shipment. Now sending elephant combat. Training uh, a single Mahout. But it was, it, <laughs> he's double pumping Mahouts. Look at that. That's a huge batch coming out afterwards. But that's exactly what he wants. Enough cavalry to pin the Hussar, the Ulans, enough cavalry to get on top of any Jaegers or skirmishers and just absolutely crush what German can, can do. Obviously, this is a tournament game, so fair play for Shetler for, for carrying this one on. But, um... Oh, hey, well, he's cleaned up the docks. There's all these fishing boats ready to be picked off. This is... Can the, can the reverse... Can this comeback happen? It feels like Shekla won. He's a massive pop of Nine Olands. Pull these guys back before the main fight. But yeah, a Nine Oland pop. We've got Frigga cleaning up like 16 fishing boats here. It is possible. It is possible. I've, I've seen um, more miraculous comebacks in its own sense. But I'm just waiting for those Mahouts to come across. There's four of them. Four with the Brick Cons and Elephant Combat. That is a lot of units to deal with, remember. Also, Snooper does have Inspiration available. So looking to call the Inspiration ability before some point you know this is the biggest fight in the game it feels like the biggest fight so far in the game it'd be a good opportunity to call 
inspiration. But uh, Snooper feeling uh, pretty comfortable in his position. And then now the Mahout's just gone on top of the skirmishes. The skirmishers are running for the coast. They're running to the frigate. They're trying to get in. That was a triple kill there for one of the elephants. And the Gurkha stand for um, more war against the reinforced for the um, Mahout's, which is what he needs. But the Gurkha's just there sniping from behind. Town center under threat. The copper miner got 1k remaining. But the uh, skirms, they can't get into the, this outpost. They're just being cleaned up here. And this elephant combat uh, switch. But, uh, oh, Snooper cancelled the elephant combat. He went for the three. Oh, he cancelled the combat. Went for the three caravels to defend the water. Well, well played. We, yeah, well played. That's a great game there from Snooper. Um, yeah, really enjoyed that one. Oh, I I didn't get to read these final messages. Oh, that would be I'll I gotta see that. That'd be quite fun. I'll I'll, I'll check that out afterwards. But um, yeah, good game though. Uh, I, I so I think I think from I think both players here. If I was to give an, if I was to give um something to think about, Snooper, strong sepoys had the elephants saw just um crossbows saw Ulans. Once the, once the elephants got onto the, if, if the elephants got onto the crossbows instead of the Ulans, they could have got that stomp, could have um, basically uh, got all those crossbows stunned. The sepoys would have moved in and uh, cleaned the Ulans very efficiently there. But I understand how Snoopy was thinking possible possible dop pop there from the barracks. Minutemen were not called at any point, so there are potential extra units there to deal with. And he retreated. And with Shackler... When you pray to the semi-FF temple, you got to go the way of the semi-FF. When you get the HF in, smash out that unit shipments. The thing is, with the frigates, with the Germany, it's the, one of the problems that Germans have is that because your shipments are so much more valuable, it's a frigate plus three Ulans, which is great. But because your shipments cost so much more experience, it takes that much longer for your next shipment to move in afterwards. And... <laughs> Bad for Quinn Snooper, a top player. <laughs> I need to. I will check. <laughs> I need to check that re remaining. Um, since when did I give Aussie uh, permission to be a mod? What's he doing here, Bongo? What are you doing here, Bongo? Yeah, the extra XP penalty here really hurts you as a German player, and the fact that because you lost that early uh, trading post due to the sepoys, which in this matchup is somewhat predictable. Because there's sepoys coming out there from the agri fort, you're training, likely to train an early batch of five sepoys to deal with the Ulans early on. The church has been buffed this patch to provide 0.8 experience per second, I think, maybe 0.7. Um, it is less XP income, but it does have a similar XP per wood payoff that a train post has, and that you would have had that church there for the entire game. So. That would have also really helped your position from the German point of view. Um, but yes, if your Indian opponent is an H2, skirmishes, Jaegers, you know Indian cavalry is terrible until they get the Mahouts, and that's that's where you utilize the kind of the skirm Ulan composition. But um, yeah, a lot of good stuff from both players. Shekhlu of the nine banks in the second game. I, oh, get to see some funky stuff with these guys. Top stuff. Right, enjoy that series. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, make sure to subscribe. All my TCL casts will be going up, and make sure I give Snoop that big two on there for him. They're well deserved. And uh, I'll see you in the next series.